right guys, this is gonna be a review of the Signet. This is the 20,000 mAh power bank. And what's good about this guy, it gives you 45 watts of power delivery. Now officially these MacBook Pro 15s, they require 87 watt chargers. So this is kind of giving you an idea of what a 45 watt power bank will give you. Now I gotta say there is actual a newer one of this that gives you 60 watts of power delivery. It just got released. And uh, I, I bought it in Australia, and Australia is very difficult to return things. I bought it from Signet themselves, and they said they don't do exchanges and they don't do returns, even if your box arrives damaged. So uh, if you can, buy it from a more liberal retailer like eBay or Target, Big W, those kind of people. But that being said, let's check out how the performance works. So now there's some things you need to know about these 15-inch MacBook Pros, and that is they require a lot of power. So out of the box, when you're using these MacBooks intensively, for example, I'm running a Synbench and it's maxing out the CPU. So when these CPUs turbo, they actually eat up 0.2% battery life a minute, even when they're plugged in. So when you're plugged in to the laptop by the DC with the official chargers from Apple, you're actually losing 0.2% of battery life per minute when your computer is being maxed out. Now this is just the, the base i7 model with 555X graphics. So if you're on, for example, 560 graphics, or if you're on the i9, you're gonna be eating up a bit more. And I have found there's a couple of issues actually. If you use one of these um, power adapters that you can plug in um, the external monitor, if you plug the official charger into that, you actually lose power. It doesn't charge the, the MacBook at full rate. So you need to always plug the charger directly into one of the USB cables themselves things you found useful. So by default, if you're maxing out the, the CPU, you're losing 0.2% of battery life, even when your charge is plugged in. Unplugged, you'll, you'll be losing 1.3% battery life per minute. With one of these power banks plugged in, you're gonna be losing 0.9% per minute. So there is a bit of a saving when it's uh, plugged in rather than it being unplugged, but it isn't as much as a saving when you're using the maximum charger. However, if you're just using your MacBook and not maxing out, for example, I had the iOS simulator running, I had the internet running with, um, with YouTube going, and I had a Final Cut open, and I was just uh, playing back through a video, it, it was actually charging the laptop at 0.3% per minute. So it does actually charge, and you can actually use the computer at the same time, which is a million times better than my last charger that one was an, an anchor 18 watt power delivery and that one will just eat into battery life no matter what i was doing so if you're just doing general usage on your laptop you're pretty safe but if you're doing an export that's when it will start eating into the battery of the computer so what i usually do when i'm out and about i always disable turbo so turbo mode allows your computer to go a lot faster than it normally would but it also uses more of the battery life so when i disable turbo it limits the amount of um, cpu demand power demand on the CPU to 25 watts. Now, when you're plugged in to the, the charger with no turbo enabled, and you're running the intensive max CPU test of Synbench, you charge the laptop at 0.13%. When you're plugged into the power bank and you're maxing out the CPU with turbo disabled, you're still losing 0.14% per minute, but you're not losing 09 as you would with turbo enabled. Of course, the computer does run a little bit slow. For example, on this one, it will go up to 2.2 gigahertz rather than 3.9, but you get a much longer battery life. So I just thought I'd share this knowledge with you because I wasn't actually sure if you could actually use one of these power banks with a 15 inch MacBook Pro, but now I know you kind of do. And there's also a newer 60 watt version. They are a bit expensive, but hopefully, you know, as more competition comes, there'll be better charges out there. So this is just more giving you an idea what the 45 watt power delivery would give you on one of these 15 inch MacBook Pros. And this is the base i7 555X graphics version. If you're using um, one of the higher spec ones, expect poorer results, but still it just, you can get some sort of idea of how it works. Hope you found that useful. Stay tuned for the full test results if you're into that technical nonsense. Now let's see, does this battery bank work on me? Arrgh. Spaceman. Oh my God, this is whoosh, whoosh. Look at this, 45 watt USB-C output. This is what you want. 
63 watt total, so it means you can charge your laptop and your smartphone at the same time. What, 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 what? All right, let's see the specs. MacBook Pro 15, look at that. How much extra battery life? It will get you five extra battery life, 0.5 charges. They have a MacBook Pro 15 on there. 13 inch will get you 10 hours extra battery life and it actually charges it fully. A 12 inch, 1.2, 12 hours battery life. That is, that is impressing me, but what's not impressing me, what is this? What, what, what is this? How am I gonna sell this on, on eBay when I don't like it? To cancel this review, we have to contact them and tell them, oi, the box you provided me is non-satisfactory. Anyway, good times is happening. Now this is actually really wide. Look how, what, it's like my size of my hand, it's the size of my, you know, it looks really cool. It looks really smooth. It's a, it's a really sexy looking device, you know? Now, I wanna put this to the test straight away. I'm not gonna play around. I'm gonna show you what it's like. So normally when I'm here watching a Western Gents United video, my battery life is discharging around eight watts or 10 watts. But let's see what happens when we plug it into the power, discharge, whatever the f it is charging. Connect it. This is charging, look at that. It's actually, oh, battery not charging. Look, it's charging. It's actually charging with 23 watts. Charging, charging. I can now watch this video by a Western gent who's a bit united about himself. I'm gonna like it. Oh, I'm sorry, mate, I can't. Unfortunately, you need to sign in. All right, normally when the computer isn't doing much, nothing's running at the moment. So it's only drawing three watts from the CPU. It discharges at around 26 watts. Now I do have some apps open. So I've got Chrome over here open and I've got the iOS simulator open and I've got a bit of Final Cut open, but my computer isn't actually doing any tasks. So right now it's discharging around 25 watts. I do have it on maximum brightness. So I just wanna give you some sort of feel. If I run the CPU test, it's gonna to start to use more battery power than normal actually gonna max out the processors. So this one's going at 3.6. It's eating up 70 watts of power there. So it's drawing a lot of energy. I'm gonna run this a couple of times just to give a baseline for how much it discharges with. So you can see now it's averaging a discharge of 77 watts. So this is the maximum amount of wattage that will be drawn from the battery. And you'd need to replenish using an external power supply if you're maxing out the computer. I'm now gonna plug this charger in and show you how much it discharges with. So right now, when the computer isn't doing much, the CPU is only using five watts at the moment. It is actually able to be charged at five watts. So it's, this battery pack is charging the battery of this MacBook by five watts. That's, uh, that's, that's a good sign. It means you can charge your MacBook whilst doing very minimal work. For example, I've got the iOS simulator running, I could be coding, I've got Final Cut open, not doing anything but minimal work, displaying what's on the screen and it will charge with five watts. And, and it's even shot up now to 10 watts. So when you're not doing much, you get about 10 watts of charge. So now I wanna run this CPU test again and see how much it discharges with or if it can still charge when it's going at max. So you can see that the battery is actually draining at this moment. It's 92.4. So there it is, it's 91.9. So if you are using the maximum turbo boost, it is gonna be drawing more energy than what this power supply can provide you. Whereas now let's turn off turbo boost. So after the third run, it actually has dropped down to 91.4. So it is still using a little bit of the battery here, about 0.1% a minute. But most of the power is successfully coming from this unit. So if you get a slightly more powerful 60 watt power delivery system, you would be able to charge the MacBook Pro when Turbo Boost is disabled. However, when Turbo Boost is enabled, you're gonna need more than the 60 watts. Now, if you're not continually stressing out the CPU. If you're just using your laptop normally, for example, let's just go into um, X, um, sorry, Final Cut Pro. 
let's just go into Final Cut Pro and let's just play back this video. You can see that the CPU is using between five to at most 10 watts. So at that stage, as previously, we were using up to 25 watts. So if we're only using between 10 or five watts, we have 15 watts to charge a laptop with. So let's look at this figure here, 91.3, and let's see if it goes up. 91.6, so it is slowly charging the laptop from the external battery pack. And that's uh, good news because normally you're not really running a torture test continually. Now, lastly, what I'd like to show you is how does this compare when you use the normal charger? And I'm gonna run the CPU test. And right now we're at 91.8. So it's shooting up to 75 watts drain and it drops down to around 50. So interestingly enough, it actually drains the battery when it's turbo boosting. So it's dropped down from 92 to 91.7. So um, what you can really conclude is Mac OS is doing some sort of things. If you overuse the CPU, it's gonna drain more power than what the power supply from the DC can supply. If you disable turbo boost, you're definitely always gonna be getting enough supply to charge the battery. In this case, with a 45 watt charger, if you're on turbo boost, you're gonna be losing battery from this at a slower rate than you would without one. If you disable turbo boost, you're gonna be losing about 0.1% of the battery every minute if you're freshing the CPU with, with benchmark tests like this one. However, if you're just using an app like Final Cut Pro and um, you're not doing anything intensive, then generally this, this kind of battery pack will maintain your battery, if not increase it slightly, depending on how, how heavy you're lifting. For me, I always just disable Turbo Boost to make sure I don't eat up too much power because I don't like it when my CPU eats up 75 watts and then 50 watts and has to drain from the battery as well when I'm out and about. When I'm on the, the charger at home, I, I, I like, I, I usually keep Turbo Boost on, but when I'm out and about, I always disable Turbo Boost to give me more battery life. And um, it's just a healthier experience in, 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 my, in my opinion. All right, hope you found that useful. So I'd at least get a 45 watt power delivery system if you want to charge a 15 inch and yes they do kind of work as you saw in this test there are newer chargers out now which got to 60 watt power delivery so um if you want you can get that one instead and hopefully that'll give you a better experience but at the end of the day if you are maximally using the cpu you can use more battery than what this uh main charger can give you and a 60 watt charger can give you so at least 45 would be good for you